Yesterday, I went for a surf to try and clear my head and decide whether I am done with the army or not. And I found myself, when I got to the beach, got my wetsuit on, giving CPR to an unresponsive, unconscious, not breathing, uh, with no pulse, um, adult male who had been um, surfing on a stand-up paddleboard in St Andrews. Now, I've had a, so a, a long time to deliberate on it, or I've had the day to deliberate on it, and I've spoke through it with Steve Bowens, who you might have heard me mention before, um, who's a, a surfer who got a serious, serious injury, and unfortunately at the time nobody was able to help him, and he set up an initiative called Surfers Helping Surfers, which is fantastic, and I'm going to be hopefully helping to push um, in the new year. Um, and anyway, I just wanted to pick up on a few points that I feel came up um, yesterday because there's going to be plenty of people who find themselves in positions where there's plenty of people or you know there's there's the chance of it going wrong for someone and I'd like to pose the question if that's the case one do you know would you know what to do um, and two would you know where for example an AED a defibrillator would be um, if a subject was required and um, because we required it and we knew where it was and we used it um, which I feel inevitably um, has saved the guy's life and there was a few other things that came up now I've helped to work on patients in Afghanistan um, trauma casualties missing limbs etc I don't want to talk about that too much but I, I will say that yes I'm a, I'm a lifeguard and any lifeguard and first aid that I've given in the past has been a weaver fish thing or you know twisted foot you know, small things like that um, to do that on a beach at home in St Andrews on a Tuesday morning um, physically and mentally is a lot harder than I feel doing it in Afghanistan where I don't want to say you're expecting stuff like that to happen but it's not untoward when it does uh, and you're in the zone and you know everyone around you is going to act the way you they should because they know what they're doing so I think too many people to thank. There's so many of us helped. Um, there's myself, a gynecologist, um, whose name I've no idea, and um, Lewis Hamilton. Um, we all worked on 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 the guy um, for quite a long time, actually. And um, Swanee, Craig, George, um, Ben's mum. So many people helped, uh, and it was fantastic to see that so many people wanted to help as well. But I want to point out that there's a difference between being helpful and helping. So I heard somebody, there was about 30 people stood around and I heard somebody behind me at one point say he was dead. You're an idiot. Not helpful. Not helpful at all for anybody. Um, someone else behind me, I think I'd been doing chest compressions for about six minutes and somebody in my ear told me to listen to the rhythm of their voice and then started reciting the tune Ba Ba Fucking Black Sheep to me. <laughs> That's the Ba Ba Black Sheep. That, that is not helpful. Um, if you If you know what you're doing... You should recognise other people that have got an idea of what they're doing. So to be helpful, how about go coordinate an ambulance? Anything like that to be helpful. Just standing round. I felt like a change jar. I heard that many two pences worth of opinions coming at us. Um, and it was clear to see that between the three of us and the others that were immediately round, ready to step in um, when we got tired, because it's tiring, um, you can see people know what they're doing. Um, so, yeah... Um, pretty tough. The guy's doing okay, which is great, great to hear. Um, and I want to say thank you to everybody that, that helped. Um, I've spoken about it with Steve because I want to know that I've done everything that I feel I could. Um, and if I could do anything better, um, what could I do? Um, it's not every day you expect that to happen. But just once again, I want to reiterate that that could be you or your loved one. You would want to know that somebody was able to help. Could that be you? Would you spend 20 minutes of your time on even YouTube learning some basic first aid so at least you have an idea of what needs to happen? Um, but yeah, that is it. Cheers. Other thing I wanted to add as well, um, when the ambulance turned up, um, I think it was maybe 15 minutes or so, um, and I was expecting and wanting the ambulance crew to take over and at the time I thought it was a bit strange that they didn't really take as much control as I, as I wanted and same again when when 
myself and, and the, the other doctor were in the back of the ambulance still working on the guy. The two, the two ambulance crew, um, there was quite a lot of faffing about, not knowing where stuff was, which I found really strange at the time. Obviously, it wasn't the time to question it, but I found really strange at the time. But I later found out none of them, neither of them were paramedics. They were ambulance technicians who, to my understanding, are first aiders. That you know, the paramedics are always on an ambulance. But if there was ever, if you ever needed an example of the NHS currently being stretched because of COVID, this is one, that was one. There was no paramedic because they are so busy. And them guys done an amazing job. Them two, them two in that ambulance done amazing considering they were there without a paramedic. Uh, absolute hats off. Um, please take that and wear a fucking mask.